Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Art, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about optimization, namely how, uh, in regards to why we care about the ordering of members or fields inside of something like a struct. So let's go ahead and open up a simple example. All right, so let's open up uh, struct.cpp. And so the first thing we're going to do is we've got this thing that says bad struct here, and let's just first just kind of take it as a high level. So how many bytes does it take for this struct, right? Or to, does it take to implement this struct? Well, we have two ints and we have two doubles, right? So an int is going to be four bytes, a uh, double is going to be eight bytes. So that's going to be eight plus eight plus four plus four, right? That's going to give us 24 bytes, okay? So we'll say that struct one is equal to 24 bytes. Now, if we go down to the next struct, Right, we see we've got a struct that's that's called good struct, and we have both the ints first, and then both the doubles. Okay, well it's the same, you know, it's the same types, uh, same number of types. So, struct two should also be twenty four bytes, right? And then we see down here we've got uh, this potentially unsafe truck uh, struct. We'll talk about this in just a minute. Uh, and it has uh, two characters and then two doubles, right? So we know a character is going to be one byte, and then a double will be eight bytes. So it'll be 16 plus two or 18 bytes total. So struct three will be equal to 18 bytes. Okay, so that's just kind of our high level intuition about how these should work. So let's go ahead and compile this, or I already have it compiled. Um, there's nothing special with the compilation. You see it's just G plus plus dash O struct, right? So if we run this, we get something surprising, right? So the first struct, size of bad struct, is equal to 32, so it actually takes 32 bytes. The good struct size, 24. Okay, makes sense, right? That's exactly what we predicted. And then the potentially unsafe struct, okay, 18, which is also what we predicted. Now let's dig into a little bit more about why we got uh, what we did. So let's go ahead and clear these out, and let's take a look at the code again. Right, so, oops, foreground. So here we've got our bad struct. Now the reason why this is a bad struct is because you know when we put you know fields uh, inside of a struct, what ends up happening is that they will get laid out in the order in which we place them. Right, and this is all based upon what's known as the word size. So for a 64-bit machine, your word size will be uh, 64 bits. Now 64 bits uh, translated into bytes is going to be 64 divided by 8 or just eight bytes. So what happens is, you know, when we're laying out our struct, we'll have say, you know, if each of these squares represents a byte, right? So this will be, you know, our int, but, you know, we only have this, uh, let's make it in red. We have a word size here, right? And this is going to be eight bytes. So what happens is when we want to lay out, say a, uh, a double, what will end up happening is it will just go to the next line. So we end up getting four bytes of padding, right? So here's our double, right? And this will go ahead and take up the rest of the space, right? So, and then this is going to be our double. And then when we have another int, it'll go to the next line. It won't automatically pack it here. It will go ahead and put the next int at this line. And then we end up having, again, this double will start here, right? Going all the way to the end, right? So we have to be really careful about how we place these things. And you see that even though, you know, while inside of our code, it may make sense to have say int double int double, well, this potentially can lead to some pitfalls because, uh, you know, in terms of how the struct will actually get laid out. Now, when we put the ints together and the doubles together, you know, we get the order of this is going to change. So if we go ahead and remove this, what we end up getting is the int, both the ints can fit on the same line so we don't end up getting any more padding bits, right? So both the ints, right? So, you know, int one here, and then, you know, int two can go here, and then, you know, double one can go here, and then just below it, double two can exist, right? So we end up getting you know, a, fairly, uh, a more compact struct. Now, the interesting thing about the potentially unsafe struct, right? So that was the one that, you know, we got, you know, our guess was correct, is we actually use this attribute, right? And we said attribute packed. And we'll, what this will do is it'll basically give us, you know, a fitted size, right? And this will be, you know, based upon, um, 
you know, the size of all the members that we have. So in this case, right, doubles are going to be eight each. Um, characters are one each, right? So we get eight plus eight plus one plus one, which is 16 plus two, just 18. Now, the reason why I said that this is uh, potentially unsafe is because it's going to really depend on your hardware, right? So when we go ahead and look at, you know, having a double, well, what's going to happen if we say have, you know, a double and an, uh, a character together? Right, so that's going to be a total of nine bytes, and we can go ahead and take that out. Right, so let's let's go ahead and test that. Um, right, so if we go ahead and have say just a single double, in these two, so you know what we'd expect from say the first version is we get both the characters on a single line, and then we'd get uh, the double on the next line. So we end up having about six byte, uh, yeah, six bytes of padding in here. Uh, but for this packed, when we go ahead and have this. Uh, let's go ahead and compile this again, right? And we'll run it. We see that it's 10 bytes, right? So what happened here? Now, what ended up happening, so let's go ahead and clear this out and we'll see why this is potentially unsafe. What happened is our double wound up being on uh, different lines here. So, you know, what could happen here when we pack something like this is let's use green for our characters. So we'll have, you know, C1 here, We'll have C2 here, and then, you know, our double, you know, we still have six bytes left on this, on this row, right? So we can go ahead and fill this in, but then what ends up happening is we need another row, right? So this is what I mean by unaligned accesses, right? Because we can't just access a single line to get this double anymore. We have to access two lines, so this is uh, potentially unsafe. Now, in some cases, there's not going to be much of a difference. There's not going to be much of a uh, performance penalty for doing this. Um, if any performance penalty at all. Um, on older systems, this can be pretty bad, but it all depends on you know, your particular architecture and how it supports things like uh, unaligned accesses. But you know, this is why we really have to care about how these structs are aligned, because you, as you can see here, you know, while we may only be wasting, say, um, eight bytes or so you know, for a single struct, right? so this was when we had, uh, let's go back to the code, well, we may only be wasting, say, eight bytes you know, when representing two integers and two doubles, right? We have to think about what happens if, you know, we have potentially many of these structs, right? So if we have a thousand of these structs, what happens? Well, this is going to be a thousand of these structs times um, eight bytes. So that's going to be 8,000 bytes we're wasting. Okay, it's starting to add up here. So once we, but, you know, like I said, this is for a simple struct that just has four fields in it. We could have potentially many fields inside of a struct. And if that's replicated many, many times, we could be wasting quite a bit of space, right? And space, you know, depending on whatever platform you're working on, that can be kind of a precious uh, resource, especially if you're doing something like in an embedded device where you really have to, you know, optimize for space. You know, every byte really matters. Uh, but that's kind of the basics of, you know, why we really should care about, um, you know, how we layer our structs and, you know, the kinds of impact uh, that can have. Now, this will also change from compiler to compiler. So whether you're using, say, GCC or Clang, um, you know, what happens in terms of, you know, the packing of these structs, it may differ from implementation to implementation. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we looked at C++ Crash Course today, right? So that's in here. And feel free to go under optimization. And then here we have a uh, memory layout for structs. So feel free to download this, check this out, test it on your machine, maybe with different compilers or with different flags. And let me know if you have any questions. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.